Hello everyone and welcome to Oreo Slaughter. Today we're going to be learning how to name molecules using IUPAC conventions, starting with alkane molecules. So let's begin. So we have our basic chemical structure using carbon atoms. One carbon atom will be called methane. Two carbon atoms will be ethane. Three will be propane. Four will be butane. Five will be pentane. Six will be hep hexane. Seven will be heptane. Eight will be octane. Nine will be nonane. And 10 will be decane. So as we can see here, it's important to know what each carbon addition name changes because as we start talking about substituents and functional groups, we start to see what names get added to the molecule based on the prefix and uh, substitution used. So let's begin with a quick example uh, showing you what a typical molecule would look like in organic chemistry. So here we've drawn one, two, three, four, five, six carbons. And as such, our molecule name should be hexane. Great. So let's first start by adding a substituent. We're gonna start by adding one carbon atom onto this carbon atom. So this will be a methyl group. As we've discussed earlier, one carbon atom has the name of methyl. So here, what we wanna do is we want to look at the entire, the longest part of the carbon chain. So we wanna start counting. One, two, three, four, five, six. However, if you started from here, you would also get the same number. One, two, three, four, five, six. In this specific situation, both would be okay. The incorrect way to start counting the carbon backbone would be to start either here or here and consider the backbone to just be this three carbon or this propyl, remember propane means three carbons, three carbon group here. Another incorrect way to be counting would be to start from the furthest end where there's no substituent. So starting from here is one, two, three, four, five, and then six or six. So we start correctly and we determine that there are six carbons in the backbone and on the second carbon, we have a methyl group. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna say that on carbon two, there is a methyl group on this hexane. And what does that look like as a molecule name? 2-methylhexane. So as we can see here, the methyl group is on carbon 2, which reflects here. It's a methyl group because it's one carbon, and it's on a hexane backbone. So let's do another example really quick. If we delete this and add, remember, this is one carbon, two carbons. So now let's count the backbone. So we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, or we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, or we could go one, two, three, four, five, six, which would be incorrect, or one, two, three, four, five, six. So we want to pick the name we want to start counting in the way where the substituent is closest or lower in number in this example. So here, it would either be starting here or here. And in this example, they, these two groups would be ethyl groups onto this carbon four. So when we get the name, we should see that it should be a one, two, three ethyl hexane because it's on a hexane backbone. And that's exactly what we see. So if we add one more carbon to this chain, our carbon chain is, the longest chain is now heptane because it is seven carbons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We can no longer use this group here because it's not equivalent. So now this is the closest substituent. We can see that it happens on carbon one, two, three, four. If we count from the other direction, one, two, three, four. In this situation, it doesn't matter which side you start on, the carbon atom, carbon number four, is going to be the one with the substituent. So if we get the molecule name, we should see that it's 4-ethylheptane. That's exactly what we see. So just to piece it all together, let's add one more carbon. So now our carbon chain is now 
8, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. And we can now see here that there is a difference and a significance in which way we count. If we start on the left-hand side, 1, 2, 3, 4, we've got our substituent on carbon 4. If we start on the right-hand side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, we see that now this is further away, and we could have started counting here to get to the lower number of 4. So when we check what this molecule's name would be, we're going to see that it's going to be 4-ethyl, right, because this is an ethyl group, octane because there's eight carbon chain. Four ethyl octane. And there we go. So next let's try a different example where we've got multiple substituents. Let's just clear the board here. Let's start with, let's start with a pentane molecule. So one, two, three, four, five carbons. Now let's give it a molecule here. So we should know at this point that this will be one, two, and this is a methyl group, so two methyl pentane. Great. Well, what happens when we have more than one substituent on the carbon chain? So here let's add another methyl group. The longest carbon chain is still this pentane back here, this pentane carbon backbone. But now we have a methyl group on two, and a methyl group on three. If we started counting from the right-hand side, it would be one, two, three, four, five, versus one, two, three, four, five. And the methyl groups would be on three and four instead of two and three, which is incorrect. We want to go with the lowest first. So we would expect this name to be 2,3-dimethylpentane. We say dimethyl because there are two methyl groups. 2, 2, 3, Di meaning two, two methyl pentane. Okay? So now let's do another example. What happens when one of these carbons is fully saturated and has four carbon bonds to it? We see that the carbon backbone is still the same, it's still pentane. This is still on the second carbon and this is still on the third carbon, but we have an extra methyl group. We have two here. Do you think that changes the way we name it? It might. But what we see is that we have our pentane, our five carbon backbone. Right on this carbon, we have two methyl groups. And on this carbon, we have one methyl group for a total of three methyl groups located on two, three, and three. So we would expect this to be two, three, three, trimethylpentane. And sure enough, that's what we see. So, expanding on this, what happens when we add an ethyl group here? Well, we'll find out. We have to just try on a different example. So here, let's try and make this. I expanded this carbon by one to make it a hexane. So this should still be two, three, three, trimethyl hexane. Okay, now when we add this carbon, it doesn't affect the backbone. So we can see that it's still got a carbon, a methyl group here on carbon two. It's got a methyl group here on carbon three, but now it's also got an ethyl group here on carbon three. So does this change the way that we want to name it? Do we want to start counting from here so we can encounter the ethyl group first? Again, we want to start going where the substituents are closest. So we're going to, in this situation, again, we're going to go from left to right. So we see here, yes, we've got a 2-methyl here, got a 3-methyl, but we have an ethyl group. So on the th do we go alphabetically or numerically? Do we say 2-methyl, 3-methyl, 3-ethyl? Or could we say maybe 3-ethyl, 2-3-dimethyl? What we see is we are able to group up the methyl groups as long as we add which numbers of which carbon numbers they're located on. And we indicate how many methyls there are, not only by the number of numbers, but also by this prefix, dimethyl. Di being two. Ethyl is put in the front, even though it's on carbon three. Why is that? 
So in this case, it has to do with alphabetization. Here, ethyl comes before methyl. And some of you might be asking, but hold on. D comes before E. Why did we not put dimethyl in front of ethyl? And that answer is because we don't include the prefixes of di, tri, uh, tetra, penta in front of the molecule name when we're alphabetizing. We go with the actual molecule functional group that's being added, or the substituent, in this case, the methyl group. So now let's try a situation where we have to decide which direction we're counting from. So we're going to start with an octane backbone. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're going to put a methyl group on carbon four. One, two, three, four. An ethyl group on carbon five. One, two, three, four, five. Now at this point, with these additions, I fundamentally changed the way we would name this molecule. Now that we have the ethyl group located here, as I was counting off, I was going left to right. But now that we have the functional groups, we have to identify these. So we see that we have a methyl group and we have an ethyl group. And we already learned that we select or we uh, place the names at the start based on alphabetization. So ethyl groups get counted first. Now in this situation, the molecule uh, changes based on which way you count from left to right. In this case, if we counted from left to right, we would say that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So this would be an octane with a methyl group on four and an ethyl group on five. And we would name it five ethyl four methyl octane. However, that doesn't make sense because we could still count it going from the other direction and have an opportunity to have the ethyl group on a lower number and still be in front alphabetically of the methyl group. So if we count from right to left in this situation, we see carbon one, two, three, four, the ethyl group is now located on four, and methyl on five, six, seven, eight. And in this situation, not only does the ethyl group get priority because it is the lower number, but also because it's alphabetically in front of it. So we would then say that this would be 4-ethyl-5-methyl-octane. And there you have it. So this is some pretty basic naming for alkane molecules. Um, this was done using the OrgoSolver tool, available at www.orgosolver.com. And you can feel free to play with this yourself to build upon your naming conventions and test yourself to see if you know what you're doing as you're naming molecules.